Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Darren and I today are not in a field, obviously. We are in the Ag PhD radio studio. Uh, we call it the Morton Studio here in Baltic, South Dakota. This is right on our farm in one of our offices here. And we wanted to be here in the radio studio today just to let you know that we do do a live daily radio show. It's on Sirius XM Channel 80 at 2 p.m. each weekday. That's 2 p.m. Central. It's a one-hour show, and Darren and I will talk about things kind of like we do here on Ag PhD TV. You know, some of the things that we'll be talking about, like soybeans, we're going to talk about in furrow fertilizer today. We'll talk about things like that on the radio and actually take live calls during the show so we can get feedback. So today we'll give you our ideas about in furrow soybean fertility, but on the radio program, you can actually interact with us as we go, either by calling in on the phone or sending us a tweet or sending us an email and we can respond right away. Yeah, so if you ever do want to give us a call on the radio show, you ever have a question where you say, boy, I wonder what Brian and Darren to think about that. You know what? We're available every day at 2 p.m. Central. Again, that's Sirius XM Channel 80. It's called the Ag PhD Radio Show. And that Sirius Creative XM title. Yeah, and that Sirius XM Channel 80. So Darren and I every day do take live phone calls. It's 844-44-AG-PHD if you'd like to call in or you can email us radio at agphd.com or send us a note on Twitter, Brian Hefty or Darren Hefty. Then we can answer your questions or just visit with you right on the show. Well, today Darren mentioned we are going to be talking about in furrow soybean fertilizer, but we're also going to discuss how much nitrogen does your corn actually need? There are a lot of debates out there. We're going to set this thing straight and let you know exactly what you do need for your upcoming corn crop going into this year. We've got one of the most difficult to control weeds, especially since Roundup isn't controlling it all across the country. We'll get into that during our Weed of the Week, but first, here's today's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. One of the biggest challenges with controlling weeds early in the spring is those weeds have to be actively growing in order to take in a herbicide. And if they're not actively growing, it's really tough just to wait and leave those weeds out there. Well, this is one of the biggest things that I think in agriculture that is just a complete misconception. Because I know for me, when I was a kid and I thought, well, the first time I heard somebody say, the weeds have to be actively growing in order for the herbicide to work better. And I thought, that does, doesn't even make any sense. Why would the weed have to be actively growing? I want it to die. I want it not growing very well. But the whole thing is, it comes back to understanding really how herbicides work. They're going to get absorbed by the leaves or roots, and then they have to move to the growing point or growing points. So on a grass plant, for example, there's one growing point. On broadleaf plants, there are many different growing points. But what I'm getting at here is, in order for that herbicide to be absorbed into the leaf, the plant has to be actively growing. And in order for that herbicide to be moved from the leaf or the roots to the growing point or growing points, you want movement in that plant and you want quick movement in that plant because the longer it takes for the herbicide to reach the growing point or growing points, the less herbicide is going to be left. And the object here is to have a lethal dose of pesticide reach that growing point or growing points so it dies. Well, the big thing you may be asking is, well, how do I know if that weed is, in fact, actively growing? Well, obviously, in the spring, you can see if the weed is green and it's out of the ground, you may say, okay, well, it's alive. That's one thing. But the next thing as far as actively growing is you can just look at what the weather has been for the previous week leading up to the day that you're looking at that weed. For example, if the weather has been very cold, it's been 40 degrees or below for the last week, chances are that weed is not growing very quickly right now. And that's what we're talking about actively growing. But let's say that it's been 70 or 80 degrees for the last week before you're going to spray. That weed is probably actively growing now. If it's up and it's a few inches tall and it's been plenty warm and it looks like for the next few days after you're going to spray, it's going to be plenty warm. That's really what we're targeting when we're trying to get good weed control. Now you may say, well, I've got a burn down application I've got to do because I want to plant my garden or I want to plant my crop in just a 
a few days and it's been cold but you know it's going to be warm in a few days down the road you're just going to have to wait if you want to do the best job controlling that weed what we're really looking for here is heat and moisture we want a fair amount of heat but not too much and we want a fair amount of moisture but not too much so what i'm getting at is if the nighttime temps are below 50 degrees that can be a problem if the daytime temps are above 90 or 95 that can be a problem what we're looking for is we'd like to have the range of between 50 and 90 for a few days leading up to spraying and then for a couple days after spraying so it's not just looking at hey what's happened in the last week it's also what's happening afterwards so for example the last week could have been great you go out and spray but tonight and you can see it on the weather forecast tonight it's going to get below freezing well what do you think is going to happen when it gets below freezing that plant's going to completely shut down and parts of it might even die well if that happens then your herbicide that may have been absorbed into the leaves or the roots how far is that going to move it might move a little bit but chances are it's not going to reach the growing point so in effect you've wasted your money and that's the big thing we talk to farmers about gardeners about anybody with a lawn that's spraying their herbicide we want you to get the most out of your investment. I like one thing that you mentioned there, Brian, that was moisture. You know, if we've been excessively wet and the roots are just in oversaturated soils, you know, chances are you're not gonna be able to force much herbicide into that weed. It's not trying to take in any moisture. It's not trying to take in any water. It's really just trying to survive. The same thing goes if you're in a drought situation. If it's been really hot, really dry, that plant is really closed up trying to conserve the moisture that it has. So it's not really actively growing at that point. It's in stress mode. If you're in a stress mode with that plant from too much or too little moisture, it's gonna be very difficult to get herbicides in. So you may be better off to wait a little bit if it looks like the weather is going to improve for you. Now let's just say you are in a drought situation or it is just a little bit on the cool side and you say, look, this is my only chance I have to spray today. What are the best things I can do? Well, you can certainly follow the label recommendations. A lot of the chemical labels will address stressful situations and what you can do if you're absolutely desperate trying to get that plant sprayed. The other thing you can do is use the proper additives. So you're using some kind of penetrating surfactant, whether it's a methylated seed oil or some kind of uh, oil or surfactant that's going to penetrate through that leaf better. That's going to help you. And chances are, depending on which product you're spraying, you may be adding a nitrogen source like an ammonium sulfate or a liquid 28%, something like that, to also help push it into the plant and have the plant accept that product. So again, we want the weed to be actively growing. We want decent weather as far as temperature and moisture conditions go. That's when it's going to work the best. If you absolutely have to force the issue a little bit, chances are you're going to increase the rate to the product that you're using and use some different penetrants trying to get that into the weed as fast as you can. Well, all these things are important when we're talking about weed control, especially if you've got our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans will provide tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate and will be built on the Genuity Roundup Ready to Yield trade. See them in action at extendfollowafield.com. I will take action against herbicide resistant weeds. I will know my weeds and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand. And I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time for all time. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows, or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com slash livestock. I wish I could side dress more than just nitrogen. You can. 
While side dressing is efficient for nitrogen applications, you can also use that opportunity to apply PK and the micronutrients your crop needs. AgroLiquids Calibrate and MicroLink products allow you to nutritionally balance your side dress application efficiently and economically. Let Agriculture Liquid Fertilizer help you make your next crop a bumper crop. For more info, visit agroliquid.com. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. In our opinion, the biggest yield limiting factor in the United States today for soybeans is lack of fertility. Well, one of the ways you can put fertilizer on for soybeans is to put it in furrow. But how much can you use? Can you even use any? We want to talk about that today. Soybean seed is much more sensitive to having salt in the furrow than what corn seed is. You just look at the seed and it makes a lot of sense. Soybeans have this very thin seed coat. Corn is a very hard seed and you just think just from the seed alone, okay, this probably tolerates salt a lot better. Now, the other thing that I think about with soybeans is we're putting a lot of seed out there compared to what we're putting in corn. Typically, we're putting about five times as much soybean seed in the ground or five times as many seeds as we are corn. So you would say, well, wait a second now, I'm putting a lot more seeds out there. Shouldn't it be more safe uh, putting fertilizer there than with the corn? No, it's absolutely not. So we want to be really cautious when we're putting it in furrow. We're not talking about just planting time applications where we're putting it off to the side. In those cases, if you're in a two by two or further away from the seed, you've got a big cushion of safety there. But right in the furrow, what can you do? All right, so here are a couple of our tips. First of all, use water with the fertilizer you're using. If you use water, that kind of dilutes things down. It improves the overall safety. So a lot of times in our operation, we're talking about one to two gallons worth of fertilizer together with three to four gallons of water for a total solution of five gallons. That really helps. The other big thing is obviously to have a low salt fertilizer, a very low salt fertilizer. Salt is what's going to hurt you, especially if you get into a dry year. And don't get me wrong, I mean, you can get by sometimes with even five or maybe 10 gallons of fertilizer in furrow. And I talk to people all the time that say, well, I did this and it worked fine. Yeah, it might work fine nine out of 10 years, but the problem is that 10th year, and it's usually a dry year, a dry spring that we're talking about, then you're gonna see major issues out there. We just don't want you to have that. The last thing we want you to do is invest a bunch of money and then it costs you money in terms of lost stand or lost yield. So use a low salt fertilizer, put water together with that fertilizer. Generally speaking, you're going to be relatively safe. When we talk about putting water with the fertilizer, the other part of that is just when we're talking about putting a gallon or maybe two gallons of fertilizer total out there per acre, it's really hard to pump that out and get an even flow going down through the furrow. I've seen many farmers over the years that have tried to do this, try to go with lower rates in soybeans than they would in corn. And what ends up happening is it kind of puts a spurt of fertilizer out and then nothing for a little ways and then another spurt and then nothing. And what we end up with is we're getting more like a five to 10 gallon rate for just a small period of time and then getting a zero gallon per acre rate out for a ways. And if we can make an even application of that fertilizer, we're less likely to see any injury whatsoever when it's just kind of spurting some fertilizer out there where we get that equivalent of five to 10 gallons. A lot of times we will see some injury on those seeds or young seedlings. Again, I like that water recommendation for a number of reasons. One would be just to get an even flow of fertilizer all through that trench. Okay, here are some other tips for you. Make sure you're checking compatibility first. Sometimes you can put different fertilizers together and they're incompatible, you have settling out, that can definitely end up hurting your stand and hurting your yield. In addition to that, try to keep that fertilizer off the seed if you can. Shoot it over onto the side wall of the seed trench, just do anything you can to try to keep it directly off that seed. And finally, I would encourage you, use a balanced blend of fertilizers. So we're talking about micronutrients, phosphorus, potassium, but just make sure you're keeping those rates low. In total, a gallon, maybe two gallons of fertilizer per acre. That's about as far as we want to push it and put that together with some water. I think it's important to remember that soybeans need a lot of their fertility late in the season, where corn and wheat 
they can use fertility earlier in the season and will use a little bit all the way along. With soybeans, they really, once the beans start flowering and putting on pods, that's when they have a very heavy demand for fertilizer. So chances are whatever you're putting on at planting time, you may need to add some more fertilizer later on. And with soybeans, when you can only put just a tiny little bit in furrow, that is just a small portion of your entire fertility program. So once again, with in furrow fertilizer in soybeans, this is a practice we've done on our farm for many years. You can certainly do it in your operation operation too. And when you think about it for just a second, if you've got narrower rows, that means in effect you're spreading that fertilizer out over more rows. So you can get by with a little bit more fertilizer if you chose to do that. Or the other way to look at it is it would be safer to use in furrow fertilizer in narrower rows. But we just want you to use very low rates, very low salt products, use some water with it, and don't forget soybeans need lots of fertility. We invite you to download the free Ag PhD fertilizer removal app for your smartphone or your iPad and just take a look. Punch in 40 bushel beans or 60 bushel beans, 80 bushel beans, whatever you're shooting for, and just see how much that nutrient removal is. It's a lot bigger than a lot of people think. Soybeans need a lot of fertility. We encourage you to get that out there in a number of different ways to meet your overall crop's needs. And one last comment on this too. When we look at a lot of fertility programs, guys will say, well, I used corn last year and I used more fertilizer than what the corn really needed. And I'm counting on that carryover fertilizer being left for my soybeans. That is faulty thinking because our corn yields have come up so much. And typically the fertilizer that we're putting out for corn just barely covers the corn, if even that. We're running drastically short on soybean fertility. As we mentioned earlier, that is the number one reason that our yields in soybeans have not been higher in our country. And I know many of the universities are looking at this. There's certainly a lot of private research going on. I know our home state, South Dakota State University, is working with farmers across the state. Just put some fertilizer out in a strip across your soybean field, if nothing else, just to prove to yourself that, wow, where I put on some more fertilizer, especially when we look at P and K, we're getting more yield just by putting a little more fertilizer out. There's a lot we can learn about soybean fertility. Well, lack of fertilizer can absolutely hurt your soybean yields, but so can our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? You can put more bushels in your bin without expanding the farm with Yield Trap. The new 24 row planter from Titan Machinery features the Case IH Early Riser Planting System. Yield Track will take you to the field first with extra flotation come spring. The tracks eliminate pinched rows and reduce compaction. All 22 and 30 inch Yield Tracks come loaded with Case IH technology, including cable drive and AccuRow. Grab more bushels from every acre with Yield Track from Titan Machinery. If you could see how nitrogen loss causes yield loss, you'd fix it. So fix it right, with the stabilizer proven to reduce all three ways nitrogen escapes. Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager. It keeps nitrogen in a more readily available form longer. With today's market and environment, it's a high priority to keep your nitrogen on track. To higher yield with Nutrisphere N. Capella corn headers are designed for producers who expect more. Expect more grain in your bin. Expect an industry-leading two-year manufacturer's warranty. Expect Capella design chopping and folding options that save you time and money. And whether red, green, or yellow, expect row size options that fit your operation because all producers deserve the best. Expect Capello. It's ahead above the rest. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your Quickroots today. If you watch Ag PhD TV, you'll love the new Ag PhD radio show each weekday on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. This is Darren Hefty. On the new Ag PhD radio program, we'll take live callers and provide the agronomic information and brotherly banter you've come to expect from Ag PhD. We'll feature a Back 40 segment where we talk to farmers and agronomists around the country to share what's going on with crop production. And it wouldn't be Ag PhD without addressing a pest of the day. Tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. 
How much nitrogen does your corn actually need? There are a lot of different figures out there. Well, we want to set the record straight today. We just mentioned earlier on the show to download that free Ag PhD fertilizer removal app. When you punch in, let's say 200 bushel corn, did you know that 200 bushel corn needs about 224 pounds of nitrogen? 300 bushel corn, for example, needs 336 pounds of nitrogen. We all know that bigger crops need more nitrogen. It really comes back to what's your yield going to be this year? And that's very hard to predict. And also, it's going to be really variable. We've got areas on our farm this year I expect might only get 120 bushels per acre, but I have other areas that I'm hoping go over 300. That's a huge variance. So we invite you to use some variable rate fertilizer application methods to try to meet those needs. The one thing that I look at with nitrogen is we want to be as efficient as we possibly can. And that means having a good balance of fertilizer. And we're talking about one nutrient today, nitrogen. But if we want to get the most out of our nitrogen, we also have to have ample supplies of sulfur and micronutrients for all those processes, building proteins and so forth inside that plant to work properly. Here's the other big thing. Take a look at what your soil can hold. So let's say that your cation exchange capacity is 12. Multiply your cation exchange capacity number times 10. So 12 times 10 is 120. That'll tell you how much nitrogen your soil can hold at any one time. Now, if you want to be on the safe side, I'd maybe only put on 80 to 90% of that much. And the other thing is you've got to subtract off what's already in the soil. So let's say we have 120 pounds that I can put out, but I already have 20 pounds in the soil. That means I could apply 100 pounds. I might only want to put on 80 or 90 pounds just to be on the safe side in any one application. If your crop actually needs 250 pounds, let's say, you've got a long ways to go. But there are other factors that enter into it, including organic matter. When it comes to organic matter levels, it's important to know what they are in your soils and how they vary across your field because they are going to release for each 1% of organic matter in your soil, 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen throughout the season. So don't forget to figure that into your program or you could be over applying the nitrogen. The other thing you're going to have to keep in mind is using nitrogen stabilizers. We get many questions about this. We use nitrogen stabilizers on our farm every year because what they're going to do is keep the nitrogen in the ammonium form longer, which is the form that plants prefer to use and it's also the form that doesn't leach. We want you to know what your soil already has, what your organic matter is going to release, and then make sure that you're not over applying. If you've got a very light soil, maybe you can't put 100 pounds all, all out in one shot. Maybe you can. You just need to know what your soil is like and how much you can apply. Well, it's important to manage nutrients properly for environmental reasons, but also just for economic reasons for your farm with nitrogen. Learn what your organic matter levels are, what your cation exchange capacities are, and work with a good agronomist to get the right nitrogen stabilizer for your program. One other thing you'll need to focus on is weed control. We'll show you how to stop this weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Your farm tells a story, one that continues with the decisions you make. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our weed of the week is mare's tail. Mare's tail's been a tough weed because it's a winter annual, so it's more of an issue in no-till and strip-till, and also it's become Roundup resistant, and it's becoming resistant to some other herbicides as well. So what are you gonna do to stop this tough weed? A lot of farmers in soybeans have been trying to use some 2,4-D now, and we really discourage the use of 2,4-D in front of soybeans. We'd much rather see you go out with some Metribuzin, that's the old Sencor, together with either Valor or Authority, together with some liquid fertilizer, and then you'll really burn it down down good early in the season. I think the best solution is just that we go out in the fall. That's the time to control winter annual weeds. If we get a fall treatment on, we can use a really good strong rate of 2,4-D and we can wipe out mare's tail. Once we get into the spring, our options are very limited. So we need to get it under control in the fall if at all possible. Hey, and in the fall, if you're going to go into corn the next year, we invite you to use Banvel. Use a full quart of the old Banvel. That'll really wipe it out. We've done that on our farm with great success. Post-emerging corn, I like status the best. Post-emerging soybean. Beans. 
First rate is probably the best, but a combination of Flexstar and Classic we've used on our farm with limited success. There's nothing you can do post-emerging soybeans that's going to do an excellent job, so you got to get that good burn down on or do a good job with tillage. One last comment. I really like Verdict. It has a strong rate of sharpen in it in front of corn that does a nice job in burn down. However, we can't use enough sharpen in front of soybeans safely to do an effective job burning down big mare's tail. Otherwise, yeah, you don't need that at all in corn. Just run with a high rate of band anvil in the spring or a real high rate prior to that in the fall. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's Weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. important is planting population and how are you monitoring it? I'll give you a couple of ideas in today's Iron Talk. First of all, do you own a smartphone or an iPad? I hear a lot of jokes that smartphones aren't so smart, but do you know how to make yours even smarter? Download valuable farming apps like the Ag PhD Planting Population app. We developed this app with some help from Case IH to assist you in your corn and soybean crops with determining the stands you're achieving. For example, let's say you're planting corn. You're shooting for 32,000 plants per acre in a 30-inch row. But how far apart should the seeds be as you're digging up the trench behind your planter to see if everything's going well? Just type in your information, and you can see you need a seed every 6.5 inches through the field to get to 32,000 plants per acre. What if we figure it the other way? Choose the Stand Population tab and type in your 30-inch rows, the app tells you how many feet you need to go to equal 1 1,000th of an acre. In this case, it's 17 feet 5 inches. So you go to 17 feet 5 inches and find either 31 seeds or 31 plants along the way. That would show that you've gotten a population of 31,000 per acre. The app is free, and it's really easy to use. Again, just go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store to download the free Ag PhD Planting Population app. Good luck with planting this spring, and stay safe. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Could I boost my potential by foliar feeding? You can. Foliar feeding can correct nutrient deficiencies and sustain your crop through stress. It's a great way to deliver nutrients that your crop lacks to reach its full potential. Research proves it. Applied alone or in combination with your crop protection program, AgroLiquid products assure that when the season presents opportunity, you can boost your crop's yield potential by foliar feeding. For more info, visit agroliquid.com. Wake up, breakfast is served. Your roots crave pea. Most of your applied pea gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a Veil Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. A Veil makes more pea available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pea availability can lead to increased pea uptake in the plant. That's more pea, more pea, and more pea. More phosphorus for your crop can be more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pea with a veil. The math for getting higher yield potentials is simple. Four is greater than two. Steiger Road Track Series tractors give you proven Case IH Quattrek technology, helping you cover more acres in less time. And with four independent oscillating tracks, you'll also minimize ground pressure and compaction for a better growing environment, all of which adds up to higher potential yields. The world of farming is changing. Be ready with Case IH. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all new s -Cube commercial tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. 
Before we go, we encourage you again, please tune in to Sirius XM Channel 80 at 2 p.m. Central or 3 p.m. Eastern each weekday to hear the Ag PhD radio show. Well, that's all the time we have for today's program, but be sure to tune in again next time for another Weed of the Week Farm Basics Iron Talk and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. 75 to 95 percent of soil applied phosphorus may be tied up and made unavailable to plants. Farmers use organic proteins and other fertilizer innovations to ensure their crops are fed properly. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.